Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling, and I'm your host. Prime Minister Trudeau came back from Europe and went on to the CBC to give a very biased interview. Softball questions, leading questions. There was nothing in it that was, had any budget at all. However, if we listen closely, we can hear where the Liberal Party and, and, the, and their globalist agenda has come to the fore. Now, I understand that nobody wants to hear, at least people watching my channel don't want to hear this guy say a word. They're fed up. They've had enough. It was a 27-minute interview. I cut it down to just over two minutes. You're welcome. Some of the things that he said are just beyond belief. I want you to pay attention to how he claims Canadians are not ready. This is the one that shocks me the most. Canadians are not in the decision-making mode. So they don't really want an election, is what he's trying to say. They want to wait and see how it plays out. All right, before I get into it, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share this channel with all of your socials. I'm trying to grow this channel. Okay, let's get into this excruciating gaslighting that, we, that you need to listen to so that you can make an educated decision. But there is this inference out there, Prime Minister, that there are people in the House of Commons who have been compromised by a foreign state. And there is no clear way to get clarity and certainty on that at this point no, in time. No, I, I just laid out that the Foreign Inquiry uh, Commission has agreed today, they announced it, that they're going to be weighing in on it. And that is a very clear way to give answers to Canadians on what can be shared, what level of alarm people should have on this. But is it tenable to, to just go on without names attached to some of these allegations? I mean, Jagmeet Singh has said that uh, there's nobody in his caucus he needs to worry about. I, I hadn't known that Jagmeet said that. Um, I would be wary of any party leader uh, drawing any sort of conclusion like that. Um, we know that foreign uh, actors are trying to interfere in all different parties. If someone's only going on where they can make the most profits in the world, extraordinary supports and competitive opportunities and quality of life for everyone, uh, for all their workers and their executives, they come to Canada. Last year, we were the third largest country in the world in terms of total foreign direct investment. Because The measures we are delivering are actually ways that are taking pressure off of families' balance sheets. But, but in groceries real are still high. You know, yes, things are still. But we're up, delivering right? a national food program that's going to save hundred eight hundred dollars a year uh, to lower income families uh, because we're delivering for four hundred thousand more kids across the country. So the I'm cost sure. of living is up all around the world. We were all talking about that at the G7. Everywhere around the world, and indeed I was talking with this with other leaders at the G7 and, and in, in Switzerland at the Peace Conference for Ukraine, um, everywhere can, people are struggling with high inflation, with cost of living issues, with interest rates, with housing challenges, with childcare challenges, all these things. We are doing better than many countries. So I'll stop it there for just a second while I let, before I let him wrap up with the most ridiculous statement that he said the whole entire time. What I'd like you to hear in the three segments that I just covered are that Switzerland is where they met to talk about Ukraine, which is an odd choice because Switzerland is also where they meet to convene the WEF. Now, I told you in another video that most of Europe has fallen to the right politics, center-right mostly. All of these left-wing governments have been toppled. Many of them have been toppled and many more are on their way to toppling. So did they meet in Switzerland to have some sort of uh, plan? I'm not 100% certain. I wasn't there. I can say with absolute certainty that you want to talk to me about how I shouldn't worry about foreign influence. Then in the very next segment, you tell me that Canada is number three for foreign investment. So me and you just realize if, if you were taking your money to somewhere and you said, I'm going to give you my money. Would you not want to ensure that there is a safety net for you? Would you not be talking to how you need to circumvent certain rules and circumvent certain um, regulations? And the best way to do that is to buy off the politician. Now, I understand that you say in the first world, we're not supposed to behave that way. But in these foreign investments, 
are these countries saying the same thing or are they saying, no, no, it's fine. That's how we do business where I come from. So when you start to talk about foreign investment, are you not also talking about foreign interference? Are they not hand in hand? And do we as Canadians need any foreign investment? Why shouldn't we be worrying about our domestic product before we worry about what other people want from us? We have enough. We can start to stimulate our own economy. But these guys can't think that way because they have to meet in Switzerland and talk about how the world is, the, is bad all over. Now, think about the idea that he says the G7 and all of these other countries meet at a summit and decide that there is inflation, housing crisis, all of the same problems all over the globe. And collectively, collectively, the most powerful countries in the world somehow can't solve the problem. Does that make sense to any of you? And if that is the truth, then they need to, should they not then get out of the way and let those of us that can, that those of us that have answers solve the problem? Now, you'll never believe this next segment. I'm telling you right now, unbelievable. The conversation of why you should quit and when you should leave, and you say you're staying. So what is it? Increasingly, Prime Minister, a lot of them are mad at you. You are the reason the Liberals can't beat the Conservatives in the next election. Where, where do you factor that into your thought process? Well, I think, first of all, Canadians are not in a decision mode right now. Canadians are not in a decision mode right now. I am sure that you have no idea what you're talking about. I think that is absolute cope. I think to tell yourself that Canadians are not ready, absolutely ready for an election right now, this second, that they would not line up around the corner to cast a vote is ridiculous, is absurd, because the policies that are affecting all of, all of Canada are not small. They're not to a couple, uh, just a finite group. I forgot to talk about how he wants you to believe that he's providing lunch to kids who are about to get the summer off, P.S. When it, the reality is that's paid for by the taxpayer. So he's taking this tax dollar. He's not giving it to hospitals. He's giving it to food because he's driving the cost of food and the cost of living through the roof. Should we as a country not be looking at the fact that it doesn't matter how rich the richest are. It matters only how rich the poorest are. It matters only that the, those of us that are on the bottom rung, those of us that are, have to worry about how their children and we have to keep our bus money leveled off and we have to make sure that we don't, we don't spend too much money on entertainment. Like those of us that are on the, the lowest level, should we not be worried about their standard of living? Is this not the way that we need to be addressing the problem? Is it not to say that we need the, the largest, the best quality housing for the lowest possible price so those of us that are the poorest among us and their children and their families can live a caliber of living that they do not experience anywhere else in the world? And if that means that some billionaire becomes a 1.5 billionaire, who cares? When you tell me that the billionaire becomes a 3 billionaire and somebody has to ask the government to feed them lunch there's a problem there and that is a problem that starts at the top and and it's the bottoms that suffers for it this guy talking about how he doesn't think canadians are in a decision making mode how out of touch are you that you don't believe that canadians are every single solitary day day and night waking up sleeping trying to make decisions, decisions on whether or not they should pay the credit card all the way or just a little bit, to decisions on whether or not they should put off paying the credit card, decisions on whether or not they can afford to buy supper or should they wash their clothes in the sink? Should, what are these decisions that they're making? Where is this guy that he thinks that it's a joke? Laughing, you see the smugness on his face? Talking about how it's not a big deal, talking about how Canadians are not ready for it. So let me just do a whole bunch more time taking paychecks and flying my jet all around the country and all over the world and watch the watch the rest of the world plummets into the depths of, of depression and recession. And then I say, don't worry about it because it's the same that they live in, in other countries. I don't care about other countries. When will he understand that? I don't care. I understand that other countries are having these problems, but I'll tell you something. The idea is that you fix this country and then we can help other countries. But if we're all sitting around in a circle, passing around a broken plate, how do, how do we expect to put any soup in it? Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I would appreciate it if you would like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with all of your socials. I will. Oh, I have memberships if you want to support me there. And I have an open GoFundMe that is moving, but not quite to the level that I needed to yet. I'll talk to you next time.